Hello, everyone. Very good afternoon. All right, it's going to be an interesting session, I hope. Uh, we're going to do a bit more uh, engage. So we're going to use mobile app a lot for this particular session. So first thing first, I'm going to get you guys to take out your phone as if you don't have a phone in front of you yet. And what I need you to do is to scan the QR code. Or if you can't zoom into that code, you can just open a browser and type in slido.com. And then key in a special code, and the code is my name, Yusno, Y-U-S-N-O. So let's give everyone roughly about 15 to 20 seconds for that to happen. So once you are in, first what we can do is you can feel free to post your ideas or questions there throughout my session. So you don't have even to wait until I open the floor for Q&A. Secondly, if you pay close enough attention to my session from the start till the end, there will be a quiz. Yep. So we're going to play a game. It's going to be a quiz. So the ones with the most correct answers, the fastest to answer those questions will basically be the winner or champion. And of course, I do have some goodies for, for the winner. All right, how many of you are in and how many of you, okay, how many of you are not in yet? Okay, I'll just give you another few more seconds. So you can either scan the code, you'll straight away get into the room, but if you are still, I mean, you still prefer to key in the URL, just type in slido.com. The code is YUSNO, Y-U-S-N-O. And this is where you should be able to start posting your questions. And whichever questions that you like, you can bump it up so I would be able to know um, what are the questions that basically I can help you to answer by the end of the session. Great, so we'll get back to this um, shortly. So thank you again, MICE Global Congress and Awards for inviting and having me uh, for this particular session. Um, this is actually my second time in India. Um, I first came, was invited to Kolkata, Kolkata three years ago. This is my first time in Mumbai. Um, and I actually really love uh, the food. Yep. So um, I really hope to explore more of the country in the next couple of days. But this session that was given to me um, particularly, we'll talk about two things. One is to suit with our current team of sustainability. Secondly, is more on the tech itself. So this morning, I think Mr. Barry, I, I think Barry mentioned about technology in the tourism side. I'm going to focus more on technology in the mice, or mainly the business events um, industry. A bit of introduction about myself. Uh, my name is Yusno, Yunos. Uh, this is where I'm from. So how many of you have been here? Good. So this is Kuala Lumpur uh, in Malaysia. So it's a very small city compared to uh, Mumbai, Delhi. We have about 1.3 million of population in the, in the city itself. And in my country, in Malaysia, we have roughly now about 33 to 34 million uh, people. This is where I'm from. And as for my company, I started a company back in 2010. So last week, we actually celebrated our 10th year anniversary. And the reason why I started the company was because of this problem that my wife and I basically stumbled upon. So this is how we actually, in Malaysia, got married. Okay? So this is me and my wife back in 2007. So we got married. And then we realized one thing. There are people who are doing weddings. I mean, we, we face issues, especially in terms of managing invitations. And 
getting them to sit accordingly in these tables for that particular wedding ceremony, right? So we come up with solutions to fit or to help the wedding planners. So from that small solution for wedding planners, we have evolved, we have pivoted ourselves into this event management software, event management solution that is now covering a lot of huge conferences, exhibitions across the world. So this is what basically people do manually before this. They would buy a thick book to prepare themselves to get married, right? And this is what we did back 10 years ago. We built a simple software and I'm a bit blessed because I'm a computer software. Um, I mean, my background is from computer software, so I'm able to actually build this on my own. So we built this, um, and then this, I believe, was our first brochure or a postcard that we actually uh, pushed out in exhibitions, and we were telling people that hey, you guys can actually subscribe this software on a paper event basis or a monthly fee, and we were quite excited back in 2010. But then we evolved, definitely. And this is where we are at now, right? So we are the digital event enablers. So how we actually position ourselves is we are not the event guys, we are just the enabler for you guys. So you guys run the events, we are basically providing everything from pre, whatever you do before an event, during, like today, whatever solutions that you are seeing, that you are using right now, and also post-events. So we cover everything from your registration, database management, email marketing, on-site management, um, you have facial recognition. We are one of the first to provide facial recognition check-in in Southeast Asia two years ago. We even have um, artificial intelligence with chatbot. Um, what you have just actually gone in is the live Q&A, um, polling as well, analytics, mobile app, etc. And even business matching. So the session before me just now was talking about uh, trade events, right? And we do actually built business matching for that particular kind of event, where we match buyers and sellers to get them to meet in an event. Now, there are three things when you are adopting technologies that you need to consider, especially in this environment where we need to be doing a lot of sustainable events. Number one is, of course, looking at the event sustainability factor. Two is about the experience itself, and last but not least is about the cost, right? We talk a lot about all of these fantastic technologies, but how much does it cost? Right, so everyone knows about the UN's SDG, right? So how can we comply when we're doing events, and how can we actually use tech to promote event sustainability? Um, I'm pretty sure we print all of these things in our events, right? How many of you here actually do not print any of this in your events? Do not print any of this in your events. A raise of hand. So in a way, we, 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 we are guilty, right? In terms of wasting paper, in terms of not saving trees that we're supposed to save, and what can actually technology do to help? Uh, simple statistics that um, basically we gathered from some of the research a couple of years back. So imagine that each of you, each of us, yeah, each of us is actually producing about roughly 1.9 kg of waste per day. Yeah, we're looking at papers. We're looking at if you set up an exhibition, a booth. If you're looking at some sort of the waste from the food. Um, we are not even looking at the carbon uh, dioxide uh, wastage and emission as well. So if we are doing this on a daily basis, our earth would not be sustainable any longer. And we can play our part by adopting tech. So I'm here to actually encourage everyone to move towards, even if you can't be 100% paperless, at least we can do a paperless events. All right? Um, a quick stats. Eight out of 10 of EOs out there 
will use online registration. And the rest are some of the numbers. When we asked them in 2018, will you use more technology or will you adopt more technology? Six out of 10 say yes. Event apps, how many of you here use event apps when you run your event? So for example, if you're doing a conference, instead of handing out all of those agendas, you're actually asking them to download an app. How many of you do that? Survey has says four or roughly five out of 10 basically use event apps. And when asked whether do you still think they are still relevant, yep, nine out of 10. Now, this was a big event that happened in Selangor, the States in Malaysia. So last year, we did a big trade exhibition and roughly about 30,000 people came from the Southeast Asia countries. And that was the first year that we managed to throw away all of the thick guidebooks. You know, they have about roughly 400 exhibitors and delegates with different conferences and exhibitions. And previously, what they did is they actually give out all of these thick guidebooks. So last year, what we did is we built an app. It's as simple as an app where you could actually throw in all of this exhibitor's information, all of the agenda, all of the speakers, presenters, sponsors, everything to the app. And guess what? You are saving a lot more than what you are spending on building the app. All right? Has anyone seen this? Recyclable badges. Has anyone seen this? It's not this, yeah? It is not widely used yet in our part of the world, but in the Europe, in, in, in the States. Um, everyone has heard about the IoT, right? Internet of Things. So this is where IoT came into action. So your badge, it, it's not cheap by the way, so it has an IoT device where we could actually change the data using the e-ink technology. Right? So once we give this out to you, every time you attend to our event, we do not need to provide you the recyclable batch again. We can just change the information based on the data that we send to that device um, as and when the event is happening. So that's one. You could actually adopt this. Number two is to actually use biodegradable badges. Uh, it is not as expensive. It is comparably the same now with your paper batch, the one that you normally use in, in your events. And the other thing that event organizers love to do is they like to pre-print badges. How many of you do that? Yep, we love to do that because we thought that, yeah, let's print everything before the event. Because on the day of the event, what we can do is we can just find the names and then give it out to the participants, right? It is time consuming and it produces a lot of wastage when the attendees did not turn out. Okay? And normally 20 to 30% of people who actually say they want to come to an event basically will not just turn out. And how do you actually prevent this from happening? We do on demand printing where we bring printer that can basically churn out these badges within five to 10 seconds. So take all of these things into consideration where you're running your event, all right? Now, we love this, right? Paper surveys, all right? I'll hand out all of these surveys. Please rate this session. Please tell me what you love. Uh, how about the food, those kind of things, right? It is widely used. Definitely not effective. It is definitely um, not friendly to the environment, and you will be consuming a lot more time compiling the results. Nowadays, we have Google Docs, we have Google Sheets, Google, you name it, whatever it is that is out there that can just give out in a link, and all of those results can be consolidated in real time. Now, I've mentioned a bit about the chatbot. How many of you are familiar with chatbot? Good, we've seen that in a lot of this retail industry, banking as well, right? So when you go to a website, you have questions, so you're just asking in a chat box, and then suddenly people will reply to you instantly. 
right? It is not actually human, it is just a robot that has been pre-programmed with a lot of FAQs. And the robot actually learns as they get more questions from you. So we take the same idea and we deploy to mice. So imagine what you can do to your event, what can you do to whatever it is that you are doing. And in this particular example, we are giving them some sort of like an AI uh, machine that can provide answers. For example, where, where, I mean, how long does it take to get from this point to this point? Uh, what's the short, shortest distance to get to this event? All of these questions can be asked straight to the chatbot. And this is where we actually uh, promote in most of our events. We've done it in the sporting events like golf, um, etc., and the, the, the adoption is really great. Now, the second factor is experience. I personally get turned off when I can't get to a good website and I can't register myself easily, especially if I have an event that I want to attend, but then the website is not mobile friendly, it is still at the 1.0 stage. I can't pay online, right? Nowadays, we all, we all have mobile wallet, we all have credit cards, debit cards, but you still ask them to pay by bank transfer, send a check. So if you're looking at this flow of getting people onto your event, you need to ensure that you are using the right technology. How many of you love to queue, right? We love queues, right? We don't complain, but we just queue, right? Because we accept it as the norm, all right? And this is, again, a norm in an exhibition, in a conference. And what we do is, as I mentioned earlier, when you have an on-demand printing solution, you could actually cut down the queuing time. And this is basically a simple stats that we gathered from hundreds of events that we have done, where if you have a stand counter set up to do on-demand printing with roughly 3,000 packs, you could actually clear them within three hours. Seems long, but then again, I will tell you why. 80% of the registrations will happen on the ground for most exhibitions because we allow walk-ins, right? Because these people do not have their tickets. So the 20% with the pre-registered um, participants they should be able to go through to this process even faster than that 40 seconds per delegate. So normally it will take you between 10 seconds. Now, I also mentioned earlier about the latest technology called facial recognition. So when we deploy facial recognition to on-demand printing, it cuts down the time to more than half. So as you can see in this video, so this is an event that we had last year in Singapore where a participant walks in to the machine, it will straight away recognize the face without asking for any tickets. So it will recognize the person, it will ask whether are you so and so, if you click yes, automatically the badge will be printed. So it, has, it is as easy as that. And where do we actually get the data in terms of the picture? We actually require them to selfie, to upload their selfie during the pre-registration. Okay, it is as simple as that. So imagine if you are doing these corporate events where you can actually um, try to make your events a bit more unique. I mean, in Malaysia, in Indonesia, or even as far as in Australia, when we actually push out these solutions to them, they were really excited because it will give their event a different and a unique experience where people basically could just walk by and get recognized. Okay? Um, we've seen this self-registration kiosk and I'm just going to share with you a bit about some of the pro and cons of having a 100% full self-kiosk with a hybrid solution that we are actually promoting. Because in events, as you know, the human touch is still required. Right? Um, we have seen in events where we have this solution and guess what? People will go and walk through the machine, and then they will stare at the machine for roughly 
20 to 30 seconds, right? Because they just have no idea what to do. <laughs> so this is technology at its worst, right? Because you think you are deploying the right tech, you are not using any human, right? But then again, you are confusing the participant. So if you want to deploy something like that, you, must, you have to make sure that the UX or the user interface is really friendly and easy to be used. If not, we have to take a step back and make do with a hybrid solution where you still need someone at the back, but make use of that on-demand printing solution. Now, SMS. How many of us still use SMS? Raise of hands. Uh, are you using it because of the iMessage? Right? But you don't use it if you have to pay for the SMS, right? <laughs> because you are on iPhone to iPhone, then iMessage, right? Well, guess what? In events, I still believe SMS is the way to go. Tell you why. There's no download required. Every one of us will be, I mean, you are subscribed to at least a telco, right? So you will definitely have a mobile with you, whether or not you download a mobile app, you will still get a notification if I send to you now. So reach is almost 100%. With a limited characters, definitely, and it can be costly if the size of the participants big, but it is efficient enough for simple tasks. Now compare that to your in-app push notification. You need to download an app, definitely. So for those of you who are lazy to download things, because you know you'll basically uninstall it after the event, there is a limited number of reach. Only those who have enabled it or downloaded it can actually reach it. But it is cheap because there is no cost to send it directly to those who download it. And it can do multiple and complicated tasks. Okay? Um, We've tried this earlier. Shall we check whether there is any questions that have been posted? Has any of you posted any questions on the live app? <laughs> we see one question there. No, three questions now. Let me switch back to the screen. What did Adam see inside the blue door? <laughs> okay. Can you help market an event? What did Adam see inside the blue door? Wow, people really want to know what's inside the blue door, yeah? <laughs> nope? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll answer it at the end of the session. All right, keep the questions coming. I should be able to see it on my phone. This is a trade event. This is where business matching happens. So this is where buyer meets sellers. And traditionally, it is not easy to organize. So imagine in China, in Berlin, uh, in Poland, where you have thousands of trade buyers and hundreds of exhibitors trying to sell their products. Meeting the right buyers or sellers are tough. Okay? And this is where you need software, you need technology. And this is where we built business matching. So for those events that are using our business matching solution, we should be able to recommend you. So now the intelligence kicks in. So for example, I would say, Mr. Anup, since you are actually coming from this industry and you have an interest in this particular area, we recommend you to meet Mr. A, Mrs. B, etc. And from that app, you can actually schedule the meetings. So this is where business matching can be utilized effectively. And nowadays, we are seeing that being used in startup events as well because startups are interested to meet with the investors. And investors are actually looking for deals. So they want to find the right startups as well. So from buyer-sellers, we are now extending the function to startup events. That's business matching for you. Now, the last point that I would like to basically share is how expensive this tech is, right? Because we're talking about artificial intelligence, we're talking about uh, machine learning, and, and definitely it is not cheap. So at the end of the day, we will say, yes, it is good to go green to use tech, but 
I just don't have the money to spend. <laughs> right? And this is not just happening in our country, it is happening all over the places where events are held. Now, let's look at it from a different angle. What if you can increase your returns by spending more on technology? Let's look at the data. It's damn hard to secure budget for event tech, right? Because you want to find the best venue, you want to get the right speaker, you want to write. Um, all of these things are first. Last is definitely your event technology, right? And almost 40% of the event organizers, they actually spend less than 100K for their events. But studies have shown that for every dollar that you spend on, uh, you guys know CX, right? Customer experience, meaning the experience of your stakeholders, the delegates, the speakers, the sponsors, will deliver three times return. So the way I see it is this. If you spend a dollar more, or at least a dollar on technology, you can get three times more return in the number of delegates, the number of revenues, you can reduce printing costs by three, right? So this is a one, two, three, right? Whatever that you do, spend one here, you get three at the end. So if that is the way we see things, technology can be adopted at a much, much faster rate. Okay? Now, look at this. This is what we did three years ago. We extended the capability of our AR, sorry, our AI and machine learning to actually detect emotions. Right? So this is after we played a game of bowlings and we just, just want to see how many of us are happy or sad, those kind of things. So facial recognition can actually be extended to this now. And if you extend this to your events, can you imagine the power of data that you have at your finger now? you could actually analyze the entire state of the audience. How many of you here are bored, right? How many of you here are asleep? How many of you here are actually looking at your phone? How many of so all of this can be detected by placing few cameras in the room. Okay, so that, that, that is where we are looking events heading um, right now. And when we push that a bit more, we could now track where do you spend your time most at? Where do you hang out or where, which side of the room do you normally sit at? Right? Why is that booth is so, I don't know, uh, it's a hot spot. Right? Why does people crowd in that area so much? So when you start to sell your booth, in the future, you are able to identify a different values by locations. So all of this data, if you don't use tech, you might not be able to get the right results. So heat map analysis is something that is trending nowadays. Right, so I'm at the end of my session, and I always like to leave by giving uh, standard 10 tips of utilizing event technology. I'm not going to go through all of them, but I'm just going to pick maybe three or four. Whenever we do an event, let's design with experience and sustainability in mind. Internet connectivity. I'm not sure whether this is a problem in India, but in Malaysia it is. I mean, we have fast connection, but for some weird reason, in an event venue, everything is so, so sluggish, you see? Even if I want to do polling, I want to ask questions, if I were to get connected to the uh, venues internet, it will be really slow. So don't forget to boost your internet connectivity. Data is very, very important nowadays. Um, I'm pretty sure you have your own Data Protection Act. And when you get events, when you have people from the European side, you have that GDPR, you have a lot of data protection acts from other regions as well. Just make sure we comply with that, especially when you are utilizing that data for other purposes. So don't forget that. Um, Use, yep, 
let's try to minimize queues by actually using tech, reduce paper, uh, save the earth, and last but not least, studies have shown, in fact, from our own experience in the past 10 years, we look at all of the events that we have worked with. For those successful ones, they actually allocate between 5 to 10% from their entire event budget for tech. Okay? So, yeah, I'm just, uh, I, I love this quote. And I mentioned before I end just now that I'm going to go with a quiz, right? So, again, you can now look at your phone, if you haven't yet. Okay, before we go to the questions, I'm going to start a poll. Are we ready? Each question will take 15 seconds. So you only have about 15 seconds to answer. All right, you can look at, I think you have to look at your phone because you have to click on the answer on your phone. All right, let's get going. Yes. Um, okay. <laughs> okay, I, I'm going to pause <laughs> the, the quiz for a while. So you can open your browser and go to slido.com. Live polls. Yeah, at the top, there's a live polls. You are in, right? Okay, good. So let's do that again. Okay. First question. Don't forget to click your answer and click submit. All right. Amazing. You guys are really attentive. I'm happy. 100% of you say, the correct answer. The next question, where am I from? <laughs> Easy, right? Yeah, good. Next question. It's getting harder, definitely. Okay, okay. Not bad, not bad. RFID is answer. Next question. Good. Print less event information on paper and booklets. Okay, next question. Based on the survey that I showed in the slides earlier, which one is the most utilized? should be online event registration. Eight out of ten. <laughs> it's okay. We still have three more questions to go. Yep. Another statistic that was shown earlier. And the answer is... Good. 1.89. Second last question of the day, how do we spend wisely in my stack? <laughs> and all right, good. Increase the return on investment and experience. Last question. <laughs> I 
I am expecting a 100% correct answer in this. <laughs> oh, we don't get 100%, but that's it. Ekanj, you are basically the champion. We're getting six, seven out of eight under a minute. Congratulations, Ekanj, right? So um, I'll pass to you our goodie um, prize after this. Um, I think Pravin, where's Pravin as well? For the runner-up, you also get the, the, the goodie bag after this. <laughs> you, you get the same number of questions right, except that you did it slightly longer than Ekanj. Okay, good. So at least you guys have a taste of what this Q&A uh, polling uh, dashboard looks like, and I hope that has increased the attention and also the en engagement. So with that, um, if I were to go back to the audience Q&A, I just want to see any else, anything else. Okay, one of the questions asked is, can your cost be customized to work with small events? The answer is yes. So we actually, the way how we are different with other competitors in the market is we localize and customize our solution. So we have an off-the-shelf solution, and then we take off-the-shelf and work with a local partner to localize it to the particular region or country, and then customize it to suit the type of events that you do. So the answer to that is yes. How, what about the personal data? How is it used? especially post-event. Um, it really depends on how you use it. Um, I think it will take uh, a longer session for me to answer, especially to cover the uh, protection, uh, Data Protection Act. But suffice to say, if you are aware of whatever Data Protection Act that you have here in place, especially when you do a local event, um, you should contain your analysis within uh, whatever that is basically given or instructed by the Act. Okay? Uh, for GDPR, it's a bit tighter, especially when you are getting uh, information from the European participants. It's, it's, very, um, it's very strict, in a way. So uh, whenever you host international events, you have to be very aware of where your delegates are coming from. Because this data they can simply request to remove, to delete, or sometimes they won't just give you the data uh, because of this act. So you, you just have to be very aware of how this um, issue is basically affecting your event. Let's take one last question. Environment friendly by avoiding paper documentation. Huge amount of data is being created. So server or cloud-based, server-based is energy consumption. Um, right now, in fact, most of the cloud servers out there are eco-friendly as well, right? So when they say eco-friendly cloud, I think Amazon, um, Microsoft, um, even some of the biggest players out there, they have moved their data centers into um, a better energy efficiencies and eco-friendly as well. So there is, I, I don't think it is a worry in terms of instead of saving everything on papers as opposed to move them to the cloud, storing it to the server. Um, I think we should be doing that because the, the storage cost is lower nowadays as opposed to store your papers in a room or um, a storage space. Right? So um, I don't think it is an issue anymore, um, especially. But, but when you choose a service provider, please make sure that they do comply with these eco-friendly um, solutions as well, especially when you're talking about where it is hosted on the cloud. I'm not sure about whether there is a law in terms of where to host your data. Um, like in Malaysia itself, when we work with the government agencies for government-related events, we actually have to host those data in our country. Right? We can't actually host it somewhere in the US or in, even in Singapore. But for private event, uh, private uh, companies, we, we are free to host it anywhere we want. Okay? 
All right, I think I am done. So thank you again, everyone, for posting the questions, for uh, engaging and participating in the, in the session. I, I, I enjoyed that. I'm happy to see the numbers are growing. I'm not sure whether because of the award session or it is because of this, this session. Anyway, thank you very much. Uh, I hope to interact with you more uh, after this. Thank you.